Hello friends, it's Matt again. Back for another evening with me. I've got a little bit of a different setup today. Uh, I'm on the mannequin rather than on the table. Um, I've got to sew back the armour that I took off my coat um, from the other day. I'll, uh, some of you might know the reason, um, but I'll spin the coat round when I'm done and I'll show you exactly why I had to take it off. Um, but regardless, I need to put it back on. So I thought that would be a really um, good thing to sort of sew in the background. And I'm um, sort of, again, going off the whole do one evening a week uh, project for me. And uh, I'm going to film it so you can come along with me. So it's just going to be a bit like last week. It'll be another long bit of sewing. Um, but it's armour this time rather than fabric. So it might be... Well, it'll be a di different enough that it might be interesting. Just going to make sure I pin it in place. I've luckily I've sort of um, got the markers of where it was before, so I'm kind of just retreading old ground, at least for me. Um, but I didn't sort of. Oh, I don't want to show you this, the back bit just yet. Um, but I didn't show me doing this before, so anyway. What's been going on with me this week? Well, it's been a bit of an interesting one. I've not been too well. I had to take a couple of days off work because um, I was getting a really sort of horribly scratchy throat and uh, just a bit of a sort of normal late winter, early springtime cold, I suppose. Um, so, yeah, well, like I said in the previous one, I. Uh, have a tendency to when I get ill, I get ill pretty bad. Um, it doesn't. Oh, I just. I think I've spoiled the end. You probably out. Oh, I don't know. Anyway, I'll show you later. Um. Yeah, when I sort of get ill, I tend to get ill quite badly. Um, and I did, but I took some days off, and I actually had the days off rather than like I usually do, which is just kind of carry on working. Um, so it did the trick. Uh, yeah, so let's... Now, I can't actually remember how I sewed this on last time. I think I started through the back. Once I get going, I'll remember. I've just got to kind of do it at an awkward angle. Um, tell you what, let's go through the front. Let's get crazy. Let's go through the front and just so I know where the bit of thread is. Now I'm not sure. I've borrowed a curved needle off Andrea. I'm not sure if it is the best one for the job. Um, I've also she'll groan when she hears but i've got a really long bit of oh yeah it's gone the whole way through brilliant um i've got a really long bit of thread because i like whenever i do sewing i like to do it all with one bit of thread so there's no stoppages um but it means i get infuriated with myself when it all gets tangled up so hopefully that won't happen because i'm sure you don't want to see that but there we go right I remember how I did it. These pins are going to get annoying, but that'll be fine. I think what I'm probably going to do is just one of them. Um, and then, because the other one's basically the same. I am going to do... So, if you've seen me wearing this coat before, I stitched between these two holes and those two holes. And then, no I didn't. I stitched, I did a running stitch along these and then I filled in extra. But this time I'm going to do little crosses. So it's like a little cross stitch. Uh, because that will look different. I might have to swap this needle out actually. It's getting a bit of a nuisance. I don't think I've got another one to hand, annoyingly. No. Uh, no, I don't think they're going to be long enough. We don't have a, I left the big one at the workshop. 
Mm. No, that's all right. Andrea's just having a look for me. Oh, ah, aha, she's found one. Let's do a needle change. Amazing. Thank you so much. This should be a bit better. I got prepared and everything. I threaded my needle. I picked, well, I got, got all everything set up and then having to do a quick costume change on camera. Oh well. So this, obviously you're watching me tonight. Uh, we are going to LARPCon this weekend. Um, so tomorrow, for all you watching this when it comes out, or yesterday or the day before, if you're watching it back later. So, um, yeah, we're going to go to LARPCon again. We didn't manage to make it last year. I can't, I'm not entirely sure why. I think we were, we either had an event on or we were busy doing something else. But we've been the last couple of times before then. In fact, the first... The first time uh, we dressed up as our Ashbourne when Andrea first came to Empire was at LARPCon and we got some really nice pictures of ourselves taken. Uh, which I could, in fact, actually link in. By Ronnie. Yes, uh, Ronnie Hall took pictures of us. Um, which I will try and find and then somehow stick in um they were the first time we ever went on an excursion adventured out as orcs you think well, i should tell everyone about the photo shoot yeah. oh we scared some cyclists <laughs> that's what you want me to tell them don't you we uh because it's at a um it's at like a leisure center but sort of in the middle of nowhere. So we got dressed up and went in and everyone was like, you know, sort of the norm. Um, but of course there were still people using the leisure centre as a leisure centre. And we went out the back to get some pictures taken and uh, sort of came out of this forest and a cyclist nearly fell off their bike. Um, because we scared them. They're like, what are these orcs doing here? They're terrifying. Of course we weren't, but they didn't know that. As far as they were concerned, we were barbarian orcs. And we were going to eat their children. Or something. I don't know what normal orcs are supposed to do. Probably something like that. Uh, and it was it was a really good event. And so we're going to go again. It would have been really nice to go as traders. Um, that sort of the, this uh, as our march event, um, but we didn't manage to book it early enough, so we didn't get on. But there'll always be next year, and oh, I'm trying to find the holes through the back of this thing. This is annoying. See, I thought I was going to be able to progress on this really quickly. And you're going to see me fumbling about. Um, yeah, so you haven't been able to trade this year. But we'll go along in kit again. Um, hence why I'm trying to get it finished. And we've got some people. Ooh, there goes a pin. We've got some people we're meeting up with. It'll be nice to see them again. And I think we've, we've got some orders actually that we can have to take with us. Which is always nice. Nice to know that we're got some regular customers which is brilliant uh, hopefully we'll see some of our orc buddies I think we're gonna we're gonna go with Sammy and probably get some footage as well it's gonna be a very nice weekend and then we'll be back on we'll be, just be going for the Saturday um, and then we'll be back home on Sunday to mm, carry on making kit and stuff because at the moment I'm only getting into the workshops on the weekend so we're we having to make the most of them oh come on oh there goes another pin that really didn't work 
as well as I, I, I don't remember how I did this, like, I'm sure it was a, I must have had an easier way, I mean, every, you, things are usually easier when I'm not doing it at a weird angle, but there we go, come on, no, I think I did it this, but, uh, oh no, I don't want to go there. You're gonna slip off and be a nuisance. I'm not gonna be friends with you. Little mannequin. There we go. Um what else am I gonna talk about? We're going to LARPCOM, so that's our upcoming stuff. Um we're going to a match made in Sarvos the weekend afterwards, which is going to be a very fun event. It's just a um, just a day or a sort of afternoon event. Um, going to our orcs. It's down. It's very close to Rygate where the workshop is. So we'll probably pop in to the workshop on the way, maybe sort some some stuff out, and then head on down for the event. So. Uh, yeah, it's a bit of a league social event. We've got a school for, sounded like a fun one to go to. A nice chill out event. So we're gonna go and enjoy enjoy the company of uh, some interesting people that I guess we wouldn't have a chance to see at the mainline events. Uh, I know one of the, one of the new Ashbourne is coming, one of Andrea's banner, so we'll get to meet him in character properly. I'm sure his kit's going to look great, and he's uh, going to be a great addition to the banner. Um, get to see Mike again. Lovely Thambir. Have a catch up with him before the stresses of being an ambassador get to us at the main event. Oh, well, I just knocked into you. Sorry about that. And then... That's about it for the next month, I think. I mean, I'll tell you, I'm sure I'll tell you all about it um, next week when I'm, when it's the day before the event. Uh, what's, what's going on in our lives? Not really a lot, again, it's sort of plodding along. I'm full-time at Aztec still, which is nice. Nice to have the consistent work. You're going to keep falling off, aren't you? I might have to, I might have to move to not be on a mannequin. Am I going to have to do this on the floor? Oh, it's a really nice setup, though. No, I'm going to persevere. I wonder if there's a way I can. The thing is, I'm going to have to kind of find the holes through the back without seeing it anyway. There's not really any other way I can do this. I suppose I could do the running stitch first to sort of tack it on, but I don't really, I don't really want it. I like it as this. No, I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep going. And if I can concentrate, we will just persevere. As soon as I find the first hole, it's going to be really easy. Now, I did think about maybe doing a script, not, well, not a script, I thought about maybe writing some stuff down that I wanted to talk about. But I couldn't really think of anything. Um, there's nothing in, in particular that I planned on chatting about, because I think if I had to refer to some notes, it would sort of ruin the flow of it. Well, not that there's any... Where are, the... Where are you, hole? That's right. That's what it's come to. I'm going to sing at the work. There we go. That worked. I found you, hole. There we go. In the front. And out again. 
A lot of people commented from the last one that they uh, they like the sort of Bob Ross quality of my voice, which was really flattering. I thought that's a, that's a really nice compliment. I've never, so I don't really listen to my voice much. I've never really thought about it. Um, but that's why I've started started recording all the Winds of War. Oh, you're gonna slip off again because. People won't listen to my voice, apparently. I guess that's why you're listening to me now. Um, come on. There we go. I'm going to have to go back and double stitch this because the thread doesn't look thick enough. I think, at least. I also need to sew... I need to tack the edge of that collar on here as well. That's what I did last time to hold it in place. Now all of the all of the winds of war are coming out at the moment for Empire's first event of the year. And I'm getting really excited for it. They came out a lot earlier than I was expecting. Um but I th oh, what have I done? But I think they always come out fairly early for the first event. I suppose the other ones, they always come out fairly late because there's a lot to prepare and there's not really much time between the events. Whereas there's a lot of time before the first event, or well, between the first event and the last event. So there's a lot of time for them to sort of come out in. Oh, I really... Grr. One of the good things about having the camera on while I'm doing this is I can't get annoyed at my work. And that's, I do that a lot. It's, and it's really not a good thing. I really don't like it. It's, it's very easy to get angry and annoyed at the work you're doing when you're doing it on your own. And it, I really don't need to. It's sort of, it's such an unnecessary annoyance, but I've got to be on my best behaviour at the moment, and hopefully that will sort of, what's the phrase, that will sort of happen in real life if I do it this way. Oh, it's really, I'm really not getting on with it being on a hack again. Right, um, I, I tried pinning it in place, but it doesn't really, I can't, can't pin it underneath. But, right, we're getting informal, I'm going on the floor, and you're coming with me. No, no, that's alright, I'll do it on the floor. Right, top-notch professionalism, incoming. I'm going to lower you down, ever so slightly. And then we're going to go around like this, and we're going to go forward, and we're going to go down. Join me on the floor. Now, let's see if I can get you all in shot. If I put you on my lap, and then I'll move the camera to wherever I end up. Oop, that's me hand in the way. Andrea, could you come and position me, please? If I'm like this on the floor, could you just put the camera where it can see me? Oh, you're going backwards. Yeah, that's better. Yeah? Hey, thank you. Too much. Lovely. Ooh. Yeah, oh, already already getting on with it much better. I must have done it on the, on my lap previously then. I thought I did it on the mannequin as well, which is why I set it up, but I guess I didn't. Now a lot of people asked if this armour that I was putting on my coat was mage armour. Um, no, 
it, it isn't, and it never has been. Um, Falk has never worn mage armour, as much as it would be mechanically beneficial to, um, because being in the Skywolf means I'm a day ritualist, and you know need to contribute to doing our coven's worth of skin of years. Um, but I've never, never actually worn it. Um, I've never, I've never made any mage armor that I thought was really. Why well, I've never made mage armor at all. Um, but I, I've not really seen, you know, sort of pr properly made orc mage armor yet. And I'd love to make some, but I don't really know what I would make. It's one of those strange things where. A lot of people, and I don't want to, you know, everyone can make mage armor how they like, um, but a lot of people will just kind of wear bits of armor or, you know, put some runes on it and that, that'll be done. Um, or they'll wear some mis mismatched armor um, and some bits of sort of costume that's already clothing and say it's mage armor and not really... If you're gonna if you're gonna wear mage armor, make make some special stuff that's that you only ever wear as mage armor. You know, it's there's such a wide variety of um, with such a wide brief. You can you can make anything. You can make you know like a big sort of bamboo crest behind your neck as you gorge it, or you could make some you know feathered. You could make some feathered leather leather pauldrons or something or you could make I don't know like a an amazing sort of bone and bone and wood mantle oh that'd be really cool um you can yeah make something big and garish something that shouts I am a mage and I am amazing that's the sort of mage armor I'd want to make um but seeing as I'm so busy currently with my title and stuff I don't really get chance to be in in the skin of years that the coven does which is a shame because I love them they are whenever I get to be in one they're the highlight of my event um, they're so so well performed Grauka and Raikana are such good storytellers and Steph and Alex are really great at doing the whole dramaturgy thing it's it's a joy and a privilege to be in those performances and to get to be part of that story that's being retold uh, is really, really fun. I mean, often I get to be, you know, such great characters as the wind or some mountains. But if I get to help set the scene, then that's all part of it. And I really enjoy it. If I get to make a fool of myself every now and again, well... There's something to be said for having playing a serious character who can sometimes let their inhibitions out the window and gets to have a bit of fun now and again. Because our characters should not be uh, pigeonholed into the jobs that they do. They are real living people in this real living world that we play, even though it is a game. Um, and we should treat them as such. So there we go. Oh, I'm really picking up a pace now. Much more interesting to watch. Now, one of the things I did mention last time is damage and weathering. Now, I had a hole in my lapel or in my collar, and I've sewn it up, and it looks really good. I wasn't on purpose, like I said I was going to do. Um, that was an actual a genuine bit of battle damage. It all adds to the authenticity. Now, one of the reasons why I've started filming myself um, is because I want to stay positive and I want to start thinking positive thoughts more often because like I've said previously, it's very, very easy to 
get into a slump or get into a rut, um, especially when you're a creative person like me or an artist who just has to keep being on the go. It's very easy to to think that you're not being creative creative enough or you're not doing work enough. Um, so hopefully by, like I said, taking this one week, one week taking this one week every week, taking this one day a week to, even though, you know, it's just, just an hour, just sort of 45 minutes or so, taking this time to do stuff for myself is really aiding in keeping that work-life balance and really aids in thinking positively. Uh, let's hope I'm still in shot as I manoeuvre about. Really, I think I'm about halfway now. Yeah. What I need to do is I need to shine this armor up again. Now I was going to take it off to acid etch it. I was going to try and put a nice little pattern on all of the edges of the, well, on all of the scales. Um, but I took it off, like you've seen, and. Because it's all laced together, I don't really want to take it apart. So I'm kind of resigned to the fact that... Oh, where's my needle gone? I'm kind of resigned to the fact that I'm probably never going to get... There it is. Um, these bits are acid etched. And if I do, I'm just going to have to take it off again. And and unlace them all, take them all apart or maybe even just do a whole other bit because we've got plenty of scales at the workshop I might just have to do a whole you know, count how many scales I've got then etch them all individually um, and do it all over again anyhow so yeah think positive thoughts that is my motto of the week. If you ever think about something negatively, put a put a little spin on it. If you think you're bored at work, you're not enjoying it, remember you're paid to be there. And that payment means you can eat and you can pay the rent. Sometimes it's good to think of the simple reasons like that as to why you do stuff. You know, if you're not enjoying something for a time, just remember what benefits it does for you. you know, if you can, I, tr I try and get out to the... We've got a really nice local park down the road. Um, biggest park in London, I think it actually is. Um, when Andrea and I started working, because we used to work at the same place, um, we used to walk home from the park. Or from, used to walk home from the park? used to walk home through the park every day and it was a really pleasant walk and it it sort of kept us kept reminding us that we lived in such a nice area and that we were fortunate to have that open space you know it also meant that uh, we were probably getting the correct amount of vitamin d from the sun because we were well i guess well, even though we walked home generally at night and it was dark but you know, we we were out in the fresh air, and we had that that bit of exercise that is really good to have. One thing I have noticed with my new phone is that it can, it's got a little pedometer on it, um, like on the on the the main. Well, I guess on the the sort of screensaver bit when you when you press the on button, and then it sort of comes on to like your display screen I don't know whatever it's called and it shows you the clock and you can like unlock it and, it, and it's got a little your password screen that's what it's called um, it has my phone's got a little pedometer um, which is really cool because I at one point I, I walk to work every morning works only only about 15 20 minute walk away and I th what, thought I wonder how many steps I'm actually doing you know to and from work so one evening, 
I, I walked home and I counted every individual step that I took. And I think I, I got roughly to about 2,000 steps. It was one journey. So I worked out that just my walk to and from work was about 4,000 steps, which is, uh, I guess, almost half of your sort of, I don't know, is, is it your government recommended walking allowance? I don't know. Uh, you know, the 10,000 steps that you're, it's a bit like the five a day. It's very arbitrary. It's kind of, the, you know, the advisory thing that they reckon, I'm sure there's some proper science behind it. Um, anyway, I digress. The So I, I worked out back months ago, sort of just manually counting them as you do, uh, that I do about 4,000 steps just walking to work. And I realised that this pedometer was on my phone. And it pretty much, in fact, it said I do about 5,000 steps just walking to and from work. Uh, if I was to walk home for lunch, which I sometimes do, which I'm fortunate that I'm able to do, um, I'd get my 10,000 steps in just walking to and from work and coming home for lunch. And, you know, with the added bit of being outside in the fresh air doing those steps, which is great for, at least for my mental health, just being outside in the fresh air, especially if it's a nice, nice, cold, brisk day, get to wrap up warm, lots of layers, put scarf and gloves on, lovely. Go out in the freezing cold weather, really, really nice. Um, but yes, we're fortunate enough that we've got a really big park close by, and it's it's very easy to forget, of course, because now Andrea works at our armory. Um, we don't get as much time in there as I'd like. There's a really nice duck pond that we often. It's not a duck pond actually. I don't. There is a word for it. It's not. It's just kind of a ditch that fills up with water, like it's. No, tidally locked is something totally different. Anyway, I guess it's just a bit of stagnant water, probably. Calling it a duck pond makes it sound nice. Um, but there's loads of nice areas that we can get out and about to. But it's hard to find the time. Um, however, the times that we do get out, it sort of reminds you how nice it is just to get away from it all. Just to be able to go and, and clear your head a bit, get away from the hustle and bustle. Um, like it's surprising how quiet it gets over there, because it's even though, you know, we're, we're on, we're inside the M25, so we're in on the outskirts of London, but as far as I'm concerned, I'd call it London because it's within the M25. Um, it's surprising how quiet it is. You know, you can be in the middle of this park and there's wild deer all around you just like traipsing around and minding their own business because they're not scared of humans at all um and it's not it's not eerily quiet it's just sort of naturally quiet apart from the, the planes you sometimes hear overhead that are um on their on their flight path to wherever it may be they're going um, it's, you can't hear cars, there's almost no sort of pylons or anything, there's no, it's a weird, a bit like I was reading in the winds the other day, so strange oasis of calm amidst the hustle and bustle of modern day city life. Not that I'd call where we are the city, no. but it's within the zone that means I can be beyond on the train so I guess it is but yeah one thing I would love to even just to say to myself is get out into the fresh air a bit more especially when it's sunny especially when the sun's out the clouds are away it's not going to rain get out into that fresh air even if it's you know at night time sometimes the air can be crisper and, and more refreshing at night time um, I often used to go for nighttime walks with my dad when I was young. I really enjoyed them. I used to go out, it was only ever like a 10 minute walk. Um, we'd go out, go down, there was a little hill where we lived, go down the hill, 
out into the sort of back alleys of the estate, around the houses, down a couple of roads, we get to a big set of trees, maybe half a mile from the house, not even that. Turn around, come home, you know, be maybe a half hour, 20 minute walk. <laughs> and we'd always have a hot chocolate afterwards. Sorry. Yeah. Oh, I like reminiscing. We'd always put, Dad would always put the pan on the, on the hob and uh, he'd never manage to do a hot chocolate without a skin on the top. <laughs> oh. Of course, nowadays you get them in, uh, you get like tubs of instant ones that you just put hot water in and they've got milk powder and everything. Ah, oh, to live in the future. Hey, what would people have thought? What would I have thought back then? I mean, they were probably available back then. It's not even that long ago, really. <laughs> 15 years ago. It's not it's long enough that they'd have uh, instant hot chocolate back then. <laughs> but yes, if I could say something to myself, when I... To me, in the future, when I'm watching this back and reminiscing about how much hair I used to have and where it's all gone, I say, get outside, drive back down to Bushy Park, wherever you're living, even if it's up in the Cotswolds or wherever, go back to Bushy Park, remember what it used to be like. Hope that the MPL hasn't turned the waters into a horrible stagnant mess like, uh, like the nuclear power plant does in Springfield. Not that it would, it's not that bad. It's only that one pond that's a bit stagnant and green. Oh, I've lost my needle. Yeah. Remember to take time out for yourselves, like I'm doing now, that's important. Especially if you're a creative person. You always make sure you've got enough time to do your own creative work. I know it's really hard, and there are times when you've got no time for it. If you've got loads of work on and you're super successful or super busy then all power to you but always remember why you started you know always remember what made you creative in the first place i used to sit on my floor at home and uh, make little spaceship miniatures that's how i start well i suppose warhammer was how i started really everyone's dirty little secret was warhammer if they're a creative person not Andrea's, no. But you used to paint the little the little monster miniatures. Yeah, but not for like quite a long time. No, not for a long time. Not for quite a long time. You didn't not start with you didn't start with them? Mm. Mm. I didn't really get into like role playing games until I was like after uni. Yeah. Oh, to be fair I didn't get into LARP till I was in my third year of uni. I mean, Skyrim was the first RPG I ever played. Yeah. Like, proper build as an RPG, and I thought it was well weird the first time I played it. I was like, what the heck is going on? Open world games are so good, though. Yeah. They're almost a substitute for going outside. Um, I, I, hang on, you just said some really nice, wholesome things. And yeah. Then you it. I said some really nice, wholesome things, and then I said, oh, I can just play a video game instead. <laughs> um, I always, right. In, in uh, games like Skyrim or World of Warcraft, right, your character is always running. Yeah. If, you, if you walk, you're going too slowly. How, how can they keep... They must be really fit to be running all the time. But I like, couldn't imagine that. I can really run for about a minute and that's it. It is frustrating, isn't it? Because your character will walk slower than any NPC character. Yes. Can walk. The, the if you're on like a, a um, <laughs> if you're on like a what's it called? Not a fetch quest. Where you got to guard someone? If you're on like a guarding quest, they're always going at like seventy five percent your speed or like one hundred and twenty five percent your speed. Yeah. Why is that? Uh, I don't know. I think it's so that you use the uh, oh, rounds and things available for you. Yeah? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> now, I am nearly on... Oh, come on, Needle. I saw you go through. Where have you gone? There you are. I've no idea um, what time we're on. Let me just... Oh, that's going to be a bit of a weird angle, that. Let me 
do a time check. Oh, we're only on, we're only on thirty, only on thirty-nine minutes. Yeah, I've always wondered, like, what in in like role-playing games where you're sort of, well, I guess it's like in in any sort of TV or film or whatever, people never have hobbies. You know, like a normal real-life person. Like, the majority of their free time will, I guess nowadays, be sat in front of a computer screen. But we've all got hobbies and pastimes that make up sort of... That's kind of who we really are, isn't it? We're The people that we actually are is what we enjoy doing, and, and you enjoy your hobbies. So that's kind of sort of your main character class no it's like your main sort of i guess it's your main stat dump is your hobby um but watching like you know police procedurals or whatever it is like you know no one in lord of the rings has a hobby gimli doesn't paint little little miniatures of dwarves to fight little miniatures of goblins I guess people have like, you know, people all sing and people all write books and stuff. But it's like Bilbo writing The Hobbit, as he's supposed to do. That's not him writing a fantasy story. That's him writing a non-fiction memoir. Is that not, is writing a memoir not a hobby? I suppose writing a memoir could be a hobby. Um, But you, you know what I mean? It's that sort of... I do know what you mean, but... With Lord of the Rings in particular, like, when would they do their hobby? Like, yeah, I suppose they, they don't have like, time. But in, in, I know, obviously in, in the film, they're on their quest, so they've not got time to do embroidery or darn socks. Um, but in, you know, a lot, of the, a lot of the beginning of the Fellowship of the Ring is, like, Frodo and... <laughs> Frodo and Fatty Bulger um, talking to like estate agents and he buys a whole other house I think, I, I've not read it in a while did he place. no, he had Bag End but he like, he spends like a year sorting out his affairs before he even goes on this secret mission he, like buys a house and Merry and Pippin set up like some offshore accounts, but no they don't they uh, <laughs> but he, if anyone's set up offshore accounts, Merry and Pippin would, <laughs> would totally do that. They've got some sort of illegitimate business going on, I'm sure. So, um, yeah, anyway, that, that's a bit off track. But yeah, I find it odd that you, you never see. Obviously, because when you're watching something, you don't. The people, the characters aren't real, and generally you're watching them doing their job. So if you were to, you know, if, if there was to be a TV show of Aztec, you'd just see us sanding stuff at work all the time. The um, you wouldn't show. really... I don't know, maybe that, that's a bit different. You probably would, if it was like a documentary like The Office, you probably would see people doing their hobbies. Um, oh no, I've trailed all my thread around these little tangly bits over here. Oh no, and I'm so close to finishing. What have I done? There's a plane overhead. Come on, let's get let's get the last of this done. I'm sorry I didn't bring you onto the floor sooner. It was it's been such but it's been really annoying watching me not do much on the mannequin. Um, I'll put it back on at the end so I can show you it all put together. But that's, I think I am, now that it's tacked on, I'm going to knot it all. Oh, I felt something sharp. Oh, that's the other bit of the armor. I'm going to knot it all together. And then pull it tight. Of course, because it's wax thread, it doesn't want to go. Doesn't want to do what I want it to. 
I watched some Wallace and Gromit yesterday for the first time in years. It's aged very well. Like it still still holds up great. Um, I could, it must have been made twenty years ago, maybe maybe even more. I feel like it must be that sort of age. Um, but it, of course, because it's because uh, it's all plasticine stuff. It, yeah, it's aged really well. That's actually what started me off. Not Warhammer. It was Wallace and Gromit, and it was plast It was playing with plasticine, making little little figures and mucking about with clay. That's really that's what started me on the slippery slope to becoming a model maker. Old fashioned plasticine. That's what yeah. That's what I used to say. I did as a degree. I had a degree in playing with plasticine. Of course, I didn't didn't actually use plasticine at all on my degree. I mainly did fiberglassing and carpentry and stuff. Uh, now I'm going to reminisce about university. I'll have to talk about that at a separate time. That was a really good time. That was. Yeah, really, really. I wish I'd taken it less serious than I did actually. I, uh, I treated it very much like school, of course, because my course was pretty much full time. You know, I was in the workshop doing stuff from eight thirty in the morning till sometimes nine o'clock at night. None of this two hours of lectures a week and and go and sort yourself out. It was a lot more hands on, so I sort of treated it like school and of course because I did it straight out of school I didn't really know any different um, but I wish I'd wish I'd done more of my own making stuff and sort of learn learn for myself a bit more than just doing stuff for the projects but there we go there is a lot of stuff we would tell each other in hindsight or tell ourselves in hindsight um, but I don't I wouldn't have changed that experience for the world. It's made me who I am. It's got me to where I am. It's got me to meet the people who I've met. So it's just another page in that long, long storybook that is life. So with that, I think I think I'm going to leave it for this week. Um, Let's get the needle out and let's put this back on the mannequin so you can. Ow! I've just gone all the way through my finger. Ooh. Are you okay? Yeah, I'll be all right. Right, let's move you around and get you back to the original position. Please excuse me while the screen is blank. Do do do. You can see my legs. There we go. So, ta da! This back here is the whole reason why I had to take the armor off. It's the Imperial Horse of our nation, of the Imperial Org nation, that I wanted to put on the back of my coat. When this armor on, when this armor on, when this armor is on, uh, I have completely finished it, and there is nothing more I'm going to do. Um, of course, now is the time you get to see the bits I never did in the first place. I didn't bother appliquing all of the little wasp names, because the armour covers them up. Um, but yeah, there we go. I hope you've enjoyed today. I hope you've enjoyed... My little ramble. I know it was a bit slow to start, but I sort of got into it by the end. Hopefully it was informative and enjoyable all around. And I will see you all next week. Have a wonderful week and a lovely weekend. I will see you later. Bye!